Well, hello class and welcome to Unit 4. Uh, can you believe that we are at the beginning of what will uh, end up being the middle of our term? These, these new, uh, going from nine to eight week terms, go by so quickly. And I want to cover uh, quite a bit of ground uh, in this brief video. But first, let me say I'm sorry. So I, I made a mistake uh, as I sent a note out yesterday, last night, and let you know that um, there was a, a, a miss. Uh, um, um, uh, a miswritten um, component that was rather important to the assignment that you had to turn in last week uh, with regard to the uh, response to the Marcus Buckingham text of Standout 2.0. So um, if you uh, if you were to have you know mistakenly, which I guess wouldn't have been a mistake in this in this instance, uh, purchase um, the original Standout, uh, that chapter that was listed would have been the correct one. So chapter four would have been the correct one. In this, in this newest version, Standout 2.0, uh, it should have been Chapter 3, I think is what it was. So I'm, I think I'm looking at that correctly. So my apologies on that. So uh, as I mentioned, if you uh, completed the assignment and perhaps you tried to work within the constraints that you were given, you said, okay, well, he's asking for this chapter, so I'm going to write in this chapter. If that was you and you made it work, then uh, if you did the assignment, you get full credit. Okay. So for those who didn't do the assignment, I can't give full credit. But if you did the assignment then of course you will get full credit because that was a mistake that I made and so I'm, I'm sorry for that. What had happened, uh, just in case you were curious, which you probably don't care, but if, in case you were, uh, when we put the class together it was somewhat last minute given some of the other responsibilities we had going on and um, put in the books and uh, once I put in the books I don't often get responses from the bookstore right away but typically uh, as soon as they're putting the books and they will be notified if uh, if a version of a text that we're requesting has been updated, and that's what happened with this one. So Buckingham released Standout 2.0, uh, and so I, what we did is we used what was the old reading list, uh, which I thought I had updated, and, and I had, but the assignments, I realized, didn't correspond with them completely. And so the chapters are different from Standout, the original uh, uh, version to Standout 2.0, we just didn't update the chapters. So, so please forgive me on that. My apologies uh, from the bottom of my heart. That was a mistake, and I will own that 100%. So thank you for those who brought it to my attention. Um, there's always a few bugs that need to be worked out with the first time we teach an online class, and so here we found one. It was a rather, um, rather significant one, but we'll, we will overcome, and we'll be just fine. So, so thanks for your patience in that, and thanks again for those who did email me and say, hey, I think that there might be a mistake or a typo or something like that. Okay, So there's that. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about this week in a little bit, but I want to talk about last week. I want to specifically talk about some of the, the coupling that we looked at uh, in the discussions, okay? So, so you'll recall that we had a couple of uh, different things to look at, okay? We had content about how do you define calling and some great responses there. So we read some text, calling in the theology of work. Uh, you should have uh, read the Reflected Best Self exercise, and, and hopefully um, you'll be completing that here soon. Um, you took the standout assessment, and then there were a number of uh, uh, Harvard Business Review quizzes for completion last week and so forth. So lots, of course, to do. Uh, you're starting to really kind of get nitty-gritty work into your vocational profile and plan, your introduction for that, and all the different work that you're completing for that. Um, and then we looked at this odd thing, and I want to spend a good amount of time talking about why. So we spent some time talking about entrepreneurship. So if this uh, unit, which we called Calling, Vocational Entrepreneurship, and Leadership, uh, gave you any indication from the beginning uh, that we'd be talking about entrepreneurship, perhaps there were some questions floating around as to why that was. And I have to tell you, I think I even made mention of that uh, when I was... Um, I think responding to some content late last week, reading your discussions around entrepreneurship, I just had to smile. I mean, it, this is the stuff, I got to tell you, when, when faculty put together a course and they actually get into the class, we envision what we hope it's going to be like. We envision the discussions, I th well, I do anyway. I think about, I, w I hope that when we, when we talk about specific topics, when, I, when we talk about this topic over here, when we talk about this topic over here, I hope that the students will engage and discuss these ideas. As I'm reading your discussions from last week, man, I got to tell you, it was awesome. It was exactly what I would hope for. And the wrestling with these topics and, and you know, I've never hearing, hearing or reading people say, I've never really given thought to my role as this or what this means within the context of vocation. That's the stuff that keeps us coming back. It's like, I remember one time I was playing golf and I'm a terrible golfer, but I was playing golf one time. And um, it's, it's been years and years and years since I was playing golf, but I, I hit a chip shot, you know, and I was probably what, 30, 40 feet out. 
uh, from from the pin, so off the green, some of the rough, and I hit this chip shot, and I remember that I hit it just right to where it hit the actual the flag that was in. The, and again, I'm not a golfer, so how, the terminology I don't know, but it hit the pin, and it almost went in, and I was so enthralled by that reality. It was one of those things. Is like I could have had the worst 18 holes, but to hit the pin. It's what keeps you coming back. And so for me, I was like, I, I have to keep doing this. It was so invigorating. And this is, it's, it's kind of the same, although very different, kind of the same idea when it comes to teaching. When you have students engage in these discussions that you hope and you pray will happen, they do. So here's what I want to say about entrepreneurship. If you've never thought about entrepreneurship before, as it relates to maybe you, your calling, your aspirations, maybe you've always kind of said entrepreneurs or, you know, those people over there, those risk takers, or maybe you said, I just don't have that in me. I really want to be a you know, company person. I want to go work for an organization, institution. Or maybe you have been. Maybe you never really thought about entrepreneurship. What does that even mean? I mean, I, I hear it. I throw it. It's tossed around. Um, some of you even talked about how entrepreneurs, um, there's maybe not a perception, but there's a thought that entrepreneurs are in it to make lots and lots of money. So there was lots of different ideas tossed around. And and that's actually what, what I was really excited about. There was so much variation. There wasn't just like a one-size-fits-all canned response, which was great. Um, the reason I put it in here, because typically if you're going to take a class on calling, vocation, career, oftentimes you won't spend a lot of time uh, talking about um, the role of entrepreneurship within any of those uh, those contexts. And I would say that because um, I don't know that we actually think of entrepreneurship necessarily in those 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 discussions, those topics, those contexts. And I'm not even pushing for us necessarily to say, are you someone who is called to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to be? What do you think? I want us to think about it. Okay. One of the things I wrote a couple of responses or a number of responses this last week to some of your great discussions. And I'm thinking about, I taught a class this, this last summer, and I, I was looking through these slides, and in the slides I put, um, how do you define entrepreneurship? And I asked the students, and the students gave feedback, and I said, here's my definition. So I define entrepreneurship by someone who identifies a problem, comes up with a solution to, to speak to the needs of this identified problem. Doing so by using essentially non-existent resources. So someone who has not been given, you know, all these resources, money, different things. You're not working for somebody. You're working on your. Maybe you have gone out and you've gotten seed money. You've gotten, you know, venture capitalists or angel investors or what have you. But you are on the outside. So identify a problem, come up with a solution. Okay. And then I asked the question, how do you define intrapreneurship? And they gave me the answers, and I said, well, here's how I would define it: someone who identifies a problem and comes up with a solution using existing resources from within an organization. So you work for an organization and you are an in-house entrepreneur basically using existing sources and they have tasked you to identify the problems and come up with solutions for those problems. Okay. They're good. So, so similar definitions almost entirely except for one is outside, one is inside. And then I said, how do you define leadership? And they gave me a bunch of definitions. Uh, and I said, well, here's how I define it. I said, I, I think leaders are those uh, people, uh, individuals that identify problems and come up with solutions uh, using both non-existent and existent resources. So, so entrepreneurship, I think, is a way of thinking. It's a way of saying, what's a problem? And how am I going to fix that? And I think if we're going to be in this conversation of vocation and calling, isn't that what I think we're all in one way or another called to do, to identify problems and come up with solutions? That's why we're studying a whole degree in leadership. And that's why this class fits, I think, so well within this context. So are you going to go work for yourself? Chances are probably not. In fact, I told my dad even last night, you know, he, I don't know you you have those relationships with your parents, but you can kind of just say, hey, I'm thinking about this. What do you think? They've been there. They've done that. You know, they're older. They're wiser. They're more experienced. And his response was, I don't think I would do that with family. You know, and, and so I'm going to take that. Because um, I was talking about what would it look like if I were to, you know, build an office in my backyard and do coaching consulting on my own full time. You know, these are things I just think about all the time. I love what I do here. So chances are I would never do that. But I do love when I get to go out and consult and coach with folks. And um, I, I always want to be in the classroom and teach. And so, you know, I'm kind of having the best of both right now. But that was his advice. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it with family. 
um, because he's not a risk taker at all. He's very risk averse, right? So, so talking about that, but he even is thinking about entrepreneurship in a very different way than I might be. I want us to think like entrepreneurs. I want us to be people that identify problems and come up with solutions. And I think if we were to talk about what we are called to do, I think that it's fair to say that we are all in one way or another people who come up with identify problems and come up with solutions. So whether you're you know, a PE teacher at a school, you're identifying some sort of a health related problem and a solution. So here's the problem that I've been given. I have to uh, you know, uh, have my, my students do X, Y, and Z. Well, that's a problem. And the solution is, I will have them do X, Y, and Z by way of doing A, B, and C. Something like that. If you're a pastor, same idea. Here's, here's the problem. The problem is, you know, uh, that, um, that there are people in this world that don't know, uh, the, the, so we're going to talk from the Christian perspective, they don't know the biblical truth uh, about how a life and heart and, and mind can be transformed and changed by the renewal of, uh, found in the scriptures, found in the gospel message. So the solution is, the problem is that, solution is I must share that. Well, how do I do that? I share that by way of preaching. I share that by way of worship. I share that by way of doing life counsel and so forth. Right? Go down the list. I have a problem. My problem is my children don't know how to do certain things. So the solution is I have to teach them and I would do that by way of fill in the blank, A, B, and C. So all of life, all of life, if we think in that context, from an entrepreneurial uh, perspective, from a calling perspective, from a common good. So the common good is that there are hurting people. So because we have this common good, this common grace that the you know the rain falls on the just and the unjust, uh, the sun rises on the just and the unjust. It's this common good, this common grace. The problem is there's hurting people. The solution is how do I provide for their needs and so forth. So it's thinking about entrepreneurship in that way. Some entrepreneurs will make gobs of money, and I would say great. I hope you do, but I hope that you do that with the intention of giving gobs of money away because there's lots of people that are less fortunate than we are that are in need of those things. So, I, again, a unique, different way of thinking about it, um, but I think an important way for you to think about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that you did, and I'm glad that I, I saw that many of you, you did. All right, so really quickly, okay, uh, I've got a, about two and a half minutes left on this video. Um, we've got a lot this week. We've got some discussions on faith and work and faith at work, okay? Uh, we will talk about the four E's of faith, and we will look at, you know, uh, um, this idea of the spiritual value. Is there spiritual value? Uh, what is the spiritual value of um, our work? Is there a spiritual value of faith in work and all those things? And we'll um, then respond to the Tim Keller, uh, uh, amazing book by Tim Keller, Every Good Endeavor. Okay, and of course, you'll continue to work on your VPP, and I'll have some other um, uh, things that I'll be discussing with you along the way this week. Okay, So lots to discuss, and so interesting. Um, one of the articles that I think you look at, uh, Finding Jesus at Work, talks about how um, there is this discussion um, so often where maybe you've been part of it where they would say, leave your faith at home, don't bring it to the workplace, and yet there's this growing trend that um, at least this article is communicating where there's been workplace chaplains hired. And so um, how do we balance that? How do we uh, do good work? Um, and for those of us who say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person of faith, how do I bring my faith to work? Um, where some would say there is no place, and yet some employers are saying there's absolutely a place, especially when you look at the research. The research says that when you look at that employees have are they're more engaged, there's higher levels of well-being, when they're able to bring not just kind of compartmentalized parts of who they are, but all of themselves. And that, of course, for, for so many people in America, and really the world in general, I shouldn't say just America, it's not. I mean, that's our context. But in the world, it relates to our faith. And that's obviously even a discussion that we have ongoing these days about faith and, and what role does one's religion play in being able to, all, all of these different things. So this discussion on faith at work um, and uh, faith at work is really an important one. So I'm excited to see what you have to say about that. So uh, my goal is to get all of your papers returned to you uh, here in the next several days and have your grades fully updated so you know where you stand. Um, I've seen some amazing work so far. So um, I'm feeling quite confident about the quality of what you've done. If I can help in any way, please feel free to email me, call me. Uh, if you're on campus or near, come by the office. love to talk with you. So have a great unit uh, four and I will be posting some more information via both video and written word here in the near future.